what happened was, is, is you know, early on I was thinking, you know, and, and like like as a as a young guy would, it was like I I actually you know need some acoustics and and I want them to you know sound, I wanted them to sound really clear, you know, and and um, I was always trying to make clear sounding rock and roll in a way. I mean, still punk rock, but um, you know, if you're if you're going like this, you really want to hear the attack and. Um, the uh, I didn't even know what Taylor was, and the, and I was at A and M Studios, and a guy had like seven or eight of them. He was actually a, a, a rep for for Taylor, Bob Borbonis was his name, and and he said, well, hey, why don't you try one of these? And um, and I picked up the guitar, we brought it in, we put it on mic, and it sounded ex exactly what I was looking for. And um, you know, I didn't have any real money back then, so I went back to him and I said. You know how much is one of these things, and and he said, well, they're they're actually you know <laughs> pretty expensive, but you know because you're a producer, I'll you know I'll get you a deal. And I said, well, do me a favor. It's important to me if you can get me one that's is like you know just just the ones that the guys at the factory think is a good one. You know, I'll just trust you. And a few weeks later, this guy came over, which is a you know the Taylor 514C, and this guitar has been with me. This is my first sort of what I would call real acoustic. That you know, studio quality acoustic. Of course, I banged it up. Now I put a put a chair right through the, <laughs> there almost. Yes. Um, and um, uh, most of the bands that I was working with were really young and new bands, and they didn't have money for a really good acoustic guitar either. So this was actually sort of like the default go-to guitar, and and it was great because anyone would pick it up and go, it's kind of bright and it's kind of, but it's also mid-rangey. It kind of gives you a good gives you a good throw, you know? It's kind of almost like a lead acoustic in a way. So, um, anyone who played it like pretty much liked it a lot. And and it was different, because it's different than a Gibson, and it's, you know, it's, it has different characteristics than a Martin. You know, it's certainly, you know, a J200 is kind of smooth and boomy, and, uh, you know, a Martin is kind of smaller and tighter feeling. This one has sort of like the best of both. It's, it's, it's big and kind of brash sounding, and this is, of course, not the most expensive, you know, fanciest tailor. I do have some of those too, which is fantastic. I really, you know, I mean, I'm lucky to have the honor of, you know, I mean, I produced a record and they, Taylor actually made a guitar called the Grux after the Dave Matthews Band, you know, Grew Grux King album. And that's a beautiful, shiny, fancy guitar that sounds very bell-like and, and incredibly pretty. Uh, but this one is like the, is like the, the sort of famous one.